This is Brian from EngineNerds.org. Delivering our chemistry lesson in behalf of Chemical Engineering Philippines. We will now begin our study of matter. On this lesson, we will define matter and explore its classification. Without further ado, let us now dive into our featured lesson. Chemistry is defined as the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. It is the study of the properties, composition and structure of substances. Furthermore, chemistry seeks to explain the transformations that these substances undergo, and the energy that is released during the processes. It is therefore important, to understand matter and its classification, in order to learn the key concepts of chemistry. We are now basically familiar about matter. We learned that matter, is anything that has mass and volume which basically means, anything that occupies a space. Thinking about it, you would realize that the world we live in, and even the entire universe, is made up of matter. It occurs in four states, and all the known states of matter may be found in the galaxy. Planets contain matter in solid, liquid and gaseous states. And stars contain matter in a hot state called plasma. All matter is composed of tiny particles called, atoms. Even though this idea had first been proposed by the ancient Greeks, it wasn't until about 1803, that the English chemist, John Dayton, proposed his atomic theory based on experimental evidence. The main point of Dalton's theory, were that all matter is composed of atoms, which are indivisible and preserve their identity in chemical changes. Also, he said that all atoms of a given element, are identical in all properties, and that when atoms combine to form molecules, they do so in the ratio of small whole numbers. These atoms that make up all matter are extremely tiny. In general, they have diameters of between 1 and 5 angstrom, or about 0.1 to 0.5 nanometers. To visualize this such small size, Imagine that if we were to place atoms of diameter to angstrom side by side, it would take over 127 million of them to occupy a one inch length. That is how small an atom is. Here is the summary of the classification of matter. Matter is classified mainly as either a pure substance, or a mixture. Let us study this chart, starting with pure substances. As you can see from the graph, a substance can either be an element, or a compound. In our studies, let us set our understanding that when I mention the term substance, I am referring to a pure substance. This will help us avoid misunderstanding during our discussions. In chemistry, a pure substance is a sample of matter, with both definite and constant composition, and distinct chemical properties. To avoid confusion, a pure substance is often referred to as a chemical substance. To a non-chemist, a pure substance is anything composed of a single type of material. In other words, it is free of contaminants. If you recall our graph, a pure substance can either be an element or a compound. Let us first discuss the elements. An element is a substance that is composed of only one kind of atom. There are presently 118 known elements. In this context, known means observed well enough, even from just a few decay products, to have been differentiated from other elements. Of these 118 elements, only 94 occur naturally on Earth and the others have been produced synthetically. Each of the elements has a symbol, which is the abbreviation for the name. This symbol consists of the first letter of the name, which is capitalized, and in some cases, one other letter which is not capitalized. For example, the symbol for carbon is C, the symbol for cobalt is CO, and the symbol for chlorine, is CL. Some of these symbols came from Latin name, such as Cu for copper, from the Latin word cuptum and Na for sodium, from Latin word, natrium. An element may exist as individual atoms, or as molecules, made up of only one kind of atom. A molecule can be composed of a single atom, such as for helium, or two or more atoms held together by a force called covalent bond, such as oxygen and hydrogen. A compound is a substance, 
that is composed of two or more elements, chemically combined, in definite and constant proportions. The formula for a compound gives the elements, or atoms, that it is composed of, and the relative proportions of these atoms. For example, the compound water is composed of two atoms of hydrogen, and one atom of oxygen. Therefore, the formula for water, is H2O. The law of definite proportions, or constant composition states that, any pure compound always contains the same elements in exactly the same proportion by mass. A compound may consist of either molecules or ions. In either case, however, the formula of a compound gives the relative number of atoms in a formula unit. The formula unit, can represent either a molecule or a group of ions. Here are some examples of common compounds. Sulfuric acid, alcohol, sodium chloride, vinegar, and a lot more. And now, let us talk about mixtures. As you can see from the graph, a mixture can either be a homogeneous mixture, or a heterogeneous mixture. Let us talk about these types one by one. A mixture is a combination of two or more substances in variable proportions. A mixture can either be homogeneous, or heterogeneous. A homogeneous mixture, is a mixture in which the composition is uniform throughout the mixture. For example, a solution is a homogeneous mixture whose composition can be varied. Such as the mixture of salt and water. Also, in a mixture, the individual components retain their identity whereas in a compound, the elements undergo a chemical change in combining to form the compound. In a heterogeneous mixture, the individual substances remain essentially the same as they were before being mixed. This is unlike solution, where one of the substances often changes in form. Such as in water and salt solution, where the individual salt crystals can no longer be seen, even though the salt and water both retain their identity. An example of heterogeneous mixture is when you mixed salt and sand together. The two components can be seen as individual species. Now that we have learned about the classifications of matter, we will be discussing the properties of matter in our next lesson. It is an important topic to begin understanding the characteristics of matter. So with all of that, and more, I will see you in our next lesson.